Scientism is not merely wrong, but also dangerous. It probably seems like an aggressive claim, perhaps it is, but it's also right there in the subtitle of Moreland's book, Learning to Respond to a Dangerous Ideology. Josh started this series by explaining why scientism is self-refuting, whether someone believes in strong scientism or weak scientism. Their belief is logically incoherent. If scientism is true, then the non-scientific foundations on which scientism and science rests would be null and void. If scientism were true, it would prove that scientism couldn't be true. It's a logical contradiction and has no merit as a system of thought. In the second video, he covered the ways in which scientism influences how everyone talks about abortion. Both pro-life and pro-choice people often act like science is the thing with all the answers, but in reality, science can only get us so far. Some scientific facts, like those from embryology, give us relevant information, but we have to use that information in non-scientific ways to come to a reasoned conclusion about abortion. If you've gotten this far, you may wonder how scientism still exists and why it continues not only to survive but thrive in public discourse. The answer is simple. Scientism is a means of power for some things against other things. It's a convenient weapon in favor of moral relativism against absolute moral truths and those who claim them. Every meaningful defense of human rights must rest on moral truth, so denying moral truth must lead to an eradication of grounds for human rights. Scientism is not bad just because it's incorrect or unhelpful, but because it is a danger to humanity. Scientism is part of a critical power structure of keeping religions other than secular humanism and atheism out of the public square. As Moreland writes, to the extent that scientism is embraced in our culture, our moral and spiritual claims will be decognitivized. In other words, our deepest beliefs about life, knowledge, history, and reality will seem to be utterly implausible, not just untrue, but unworthy of rational consideration. Scientism rejects as invalid or inferior the claims of every religion other than these two, and secularism is not value neutral even though it pretends to be. Atheism is more upfront about this. To allow secularism to dominate is to reject claims rooted in faith as inherently wrong in public settings. Why is this a problem? We can't all agree on faith, so we shouldn't talk about it in public, you might say. And indeed, ERI does not make use of faith-based arguments in most of our conversations about abortion, because that's not how we can most effectively convince pro-choice people to become pro-life. But our tactical decision is in response to the overwhelming hold secularism has on society, not an endorsement of it. Secularism demands religious people split their identity in half. It says, you can cultivate faith or whatever, and here's a study showing why it's good for your health, but that part of you can't exist in public. No, only some whitewashed version of yourself without deeply held beliefs is allowed to exist at work, school, and in the halls of power. It should be easy to see the issue here. People can't realistically compartmentalize themselves in all of their interactions, and even if they could, it would be completely unhealthy. Secularism purports to be an empty space promoting the equality of ideas, but it's truly a method of controlling the public by discarding as unacceptable the foundations for their dearly held beliefs. Let's look at some ways in which this power is exercised. Scientism is, for secularism, a means of power. Science, as opposed to scientism, offers us explanatory power for natural phenomena. Scientism demands something far greater power over nature itself, often described as man's conquest of nature. To help us understand this point further, I'll be drawing heavily from The Abolition of Man by C.S. Lewis. This book is a short read, and it perfectly complements what Moreland spoke of in his book. One of the issues with conquering nature, in this sense, is that we're changing whatever we consider nature in line with our own whims. When we understand a thing analytically and then dominate and use it for our own convenience, we reduce it to the level of nature in the sense that we suspend our judgments of value about it, ignore its final cause, if any, and treat it in terms of quantity. For example, if everything is merely natural, my beliefs about God are irrelevant. Beneath the inspection for truth or falsehood, they were just beneficial to ensure the survival of some portion of the species in a conjectured prehistoric past. In applying bad philosophy to science, all that is interesting about humanity is not explained, but explained away. All scientism really does is hijack science with bad philosophy. Scientism reduces humanity to the level of natural phenomenon. Lewis writes, But as soon as we take the final step of reducing our own species to the level of mere nature, the whole process is stultified. 
For this time, the being who stood to gain and the being who has been sacrificed are one in the same. Once man is mere nature, then humanity is natural material to be shaped by the technical elite. For the power of man to make himself what he pleases means, as we have seen, the power of some men to make other men what they please. If this sounds like a science fiction novel, think about what powers are already being exercised on us. Sex-selective abortion as a means to control the sex of the children you raise is the barest tip of the iceberg. Screening genes of embryos during IVF to control for desirable qualities before implantation. The promise of technologies like CRISPR, which can be used to perform edits of the DNA of people so that traits can be passed on to their children. Synthetic biology is a field of science which treats organic chemistry like a child's Lego set. This is to say nothing about potential future technologies of enhancement, most terrifying of which is the use of biochemistry for moral enhancement. Neuropsychology could manipulate what a person believes to be right or wrong. Without the science for moral enhancement, scientism is content to use more conventional means to attack what is now derided as traditional morality. In rejecting explanatory power of philosophy and religion, scientism must discard any basis for objective morality. As I said earlier, without objective moral truth, human rights cannot be secured because there's no duty to our fellow man which is true in all times and all places. Scientism is inherently hostile to moral truth. There are many people who buy into scientism who still profess morality, but that is only possible as a logical inconsistency. Either we are rational spirit obliged forever to obey the absolute values of the Deo natural law, or else we are mere nature to be kneaded and cut into shapes for the pleasures of masters who must, by hypothesis, have no motive but their own natural impulses. To those who want morality but who have been seduced by scientism, I hope that the appeal to common sense and common virtue can persuade them. To those who persist in scientism and deny moral values, Lewis says, it is in man's power to treat himself as a mere natural object and his own judgments of value as raw material for scientific manipulation. If man chooses to treat himself as raw material, raw material he will be. To deny morality is to deny that we are more than the random firing of synapses in the brain. That belief can only be motivated by random firing of synapses. Only whim and impulse are left and any barrier against the impulse to oppression has been removed. Scientism allowed to take root and thrive must be fatal for what we call humanity. Our beliefs, our morals, our nature are all cast aside by its advance. It inevitably enables injustice. It can do no other because it discarded the foundations of justice. It bears mentioning once again that science need not be identical to scientism. Science can help us to see, to know, and to situate that knowledge within a broader worldview. Scientism, on the other hand, is designed to see through everything but natural facts by reducing everything to natural facts. On page 50, Lewis writes, You cannot go on explaining away forever. You will find that you have explained explanation itself away. You cannot go on seeing through things forever. The whole point of seeing through something is to see something through it. It is good that the window should be transparent because the street or garden beyond it is opaque. How if you saw through the garden too? It is no use trying to see through first principles. If you see through everything, then everything is transparent. But a wholly transparent world is an invisible world. To see through all things is the same as not to see.